Excuse me, everyone. Meeting call to order. Council Member Chapman. Here. Council Member Clayton. Here. Council Member Kendall. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 7, 2022, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, the mayor and city council would like to present a proclamation recognizing uh, Diana Pittet and the Surfrider Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yay. And I'm just going to let Wendy and John, do you want to just come up and say a quick word? 
about Surf Rider? Or am I putting Wendy him on the other side? Wendy go. Like Wendy go. Or you go. 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 All right, so, um, well, thank you. Well, well you, Especially, Wendy, you guys are both a big part of um, pushing Diana to get here and accept this proclamation. <laughs> yes, and she told me what you did. So this was so well deserved. We we felt that we had to bring the crowd out for, for Diana. Right. And the only thing I would say is we called as the Park Family Day for 16 years. The event predates it. I don't even know what we called it before that, but we had an event somewhere. I had a T-shirt that says 2003, and that was the second one. So I think it's 20 years. But um, we appreciate that the Park let us do this and the first few years on our own and now it's a full on community events we love it so thank you so much and i would be remiss if i didn't bring up joe warner who is also one of the founders of Esbury park family yes. day and a former council member yes <laughs> okay we'd like to move on to the next proclamation this one will be recognizing celia morissette And Celia offered to coordinate some activities that would shine light on this anniversary. And um, she's also done so much for the city. She's on um, the Historical Society, Sunset Lake Conservancy, and so many other things. And Celia and her band of, of married men and women have really done an amazing job of bringing events to the city in the past year. So this proclamation is to thank them for all they've done and the legacy of the past. Um, whereas the year 2021 signifies the 150th anniversary of Asbury Park's 1871 founding and dedicated city resident, Sylvia Morissette, stepped up to take the lead and coordinated an ambitious slate of public welcome events for the city's subcentennial celebration, which took me a full year to be able to say something. <laughs> Envisioned as the greatest 150th birthday celebration Ever. And whereas Celia Morris said, a longtime member and former vice president of the Asbury Park Historical Society, embraced 2021 as we are being to celebrate the dynamic, progressive, and trailblazing, diverse, and fascinating cultural footprint of our little but loud city by the city, Asbury Park. And whereas Celia reached out to numerous members of the city's creative, business, and nonprofit activist community to convene a committee and design a program of events that was scheduled to run through the fall with the added uh, position of Asbury Park as a year-round destination, not strictly a summer resort. And whereas in partnership with the Asbury Park Music Foundation, the Asbury Park African American Music Project, Celia envisioned a series of events that launch again every aspect of the town's rich soundtrack. From the immensely popular boardwalk band concerts of Arthur Pryor in the early 1900s to the jazz gospel duop sound of the city's west side to the rock and roll band scene that shaped iconic superstar music. And whereas working with Jean McDowell of Asbury Park Funhouse, <laughs> the logo for the city's 150th birthday, one that appeared on all aspects of the ministry, from advertising such specialty items and wearables to banners displayed at City Hall and other locations throughout the town. We are actually coordinating the City Hall birthday party in November of 1921, 2021, <laughs> in which all churches, clubs, and organizations were invited to bake and submit a birthday cake as their custom crafted contribution to special cake contest. Now, therefore, to resolve is that Mayor Moore and the Library Park City Council do hereby pay honor and city to Sylvia Morissette for her outstanding service dedication to serving our community and faithful donations to the city and its cultural legacy. As we all well know, especially in this city, it's not an individual. Um, it's, uh, no I can 
the word team is actually the next vote. So there are a number of people that I want to thank. And for you about serious. As I just mentioned, um, it's been said that it takes a village. And in the case of celebrating Asbury Park, sesquicentennial, and it'll be one of the last times we use that when we arrive at our meeting. This amazing city by the sea has proven the adage true. Many organizations and residents volunteered and gener generously donated their time, money, and passion to commemorate our city's 150th anniversary. There are many people to thank. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention early and step back to point. Of course, the Asbury Park Historical Society has been an integral part of the city's history, and Tom Chesick began it all by researching and producing the coveted 2021 Historical Society calendar. Hey, Harris. Hey. <laughs> and board member, president, and board member, Ireland. <laughs> to guarantee the anniversary of our city founding wouldn't be the law. Jean McNola. created the 150th logo and banner that was seen on City Hall and on posters and signs throughout the city. They also produced merchandise for college and special media. Tom Pavinsky created a new coastal garden to acknowledge the anniversary and planted posters throughout all of our public gardens for residents and visitors to see. I thank my colleague on the committee, Joe Kelchie. Mm -hmm. He brought his international marketing skills from Australia, oh, okay. <laughs> from Australia and Asia to help him organize the common events. Of course, some of the two events set on the professional efforts of Jenny Stein to hit you up fortune with marketing. I don't know if Jenny's here. Their email blasts and threats on social media guaranteed that our messages will be free. We also wish to thank Ellen Carroll, our poster, who generously promoted all of our events, from the Paragon Ragtime Dance Tribute to Arthur Pryor back in May, to the Drag Show in September, and the Candidate in October. And most importantly, the Time Capsule, now buried in front of the Stephen Crane House, would not have been possible without the dedication and effort of Susan Rodenberg. who spearheaded can finance the project. <laughs> Our committee members included Michelle Gladden, Lisa Bobino, Sylvia, Sylvia <laughs> uh, Elena Cezanis, as well as Kate and Irene, um, who secured the artifact and memorabilia that represented Asbury Park in 2021. I only wish we could be here in 50 years to realize how future generations will reflect on the materials, objects, and momentum that documented our lives during a challenging moment in time. I sincerely thank the City and the Council for acknowledging all of our efforts and recognize last year's successful centennial and we look forward to building upon the legacy of the Asbury Rudd and working together to continue the renaissance that has transformed Asbury Park into one of the more dynamic, vibrant, and diverse cities on the East Coast. Thank you all. And then we offer this commemorative poster to the council so that it may also adorn your wall. Thank you. Thank you. Proclamation. 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 Proclam
Uh, we're now on to matters from City Council. Councilmember Chapman. I have nothing at this time, but I just want to let everyone know who just got a proclamation, you can stay for the meeting if you'd like to, but there's no pressure to stay. <laughs> Councilmember Clayton? Nothing. Thank you. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. As most of you know, can you hear me? As most of you know, summer's coming to an end very soon. And I would like to encourage you all to get involved with some of the city things that we have, the events. Uh, we have a couple of events that's coming up and there's a couple of regular events. Uh, Monday night concerts, music foundation, uh, the see here, see here show that will be on the beach. Uh, there's quite a few more. You could just look go to uh, the web page and look them up. And I know the people downtown will be more than happy to see you. Thank you for everything. Bye. Deputy Mary Quinn. I have nothing. Thanks. Mayor Moore. Thank you. All right. We're now on to public participation. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move to open. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Public participation portion of the meeting is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone. State your name and address for the record. And there's going to be a three minute time limit for each speaker. My name is Lakeisha Johnson. I was born and raised in Asbury Park. I graduated in the class of 1993 and will forever be a Blue Bishop. I am speaking on behalf of my mother, resident of Asbury Park, Deborah Walker, and our family. My 33-year-old brother, Kaishan Butty Walker, was gunned down on Seoul Avenue in Asbury Park on July 28th in broad daylight, just four days before his 34th birthday. <laughs> He was an innocent bystander. He was not a gangbanger. He was not raised in the streets. He was an innocent victim. My only brother, my mother's only son. We are devastated and the grief, emptiness, and pain that we feel are indescribable. We understand that you are aware that our family would be here. We hope that you'll receive what we're stating empathetically and will not be on the defense based on any preconceived idea. This is our first, but certainly not the last of our efforts to, to address gun violence in the city of Asbury Park and solicitation of the community's help in finding my brother's murderer. We received no empathy directly from the city of Asbury Park. The detective has been awesome but that is all and do not believe that the empathy and do not want to believe that the empathy or lack thereof extended is based on the victim I do not proclaim to be a politician so my questions may be ignorant but here they are just the same there are a series of questions I do have them on a separate piece of paper um, if somebody would like them um, but my questions I'll start you may want to jot them down or I'm not sure what the best way the questions I'll start are, were you council members individually aware of my brother's killing? I am respectfully asking what the city is doing to address gun control and related violence in Asbury. 
How does the city council directly support families of gun violence victims? I noticed that your website lists that there is a narcotics and gangs unit. Is this unit still active as I'm not clear that it is? If so, who is in charge? If it is not, why is it still listed on the website? What was the reason it was dismantled? What was the process for dismantling? Was it replaced? A former police chief stated, there's a direct correlation to violent crime and the amount of street level policing we do in our narcotics and gang unit. We want everybody to get the message that there is a lot of law enforcement here and the guns don't belong here. Are these still the sentiments of the city? If so, what does this look like now? Is there any type of advisory council made up of city officials, community leaders, and survivors of gun violence? If it does exist, what's its function? Are they aware of my brother's passing? If it doesn't exist, what is the process to get this started, and how, you will, how will you support? I am also aware that the council was previously asked about increasing presence during prior meetings. I, I viewed a few meetings. Mr. Young, a uh, representative from the AYF football team, and Ms. Harrell, a concerned resident. While it's commendable that you offer funding and requested flyers, it's also disturbing that the council did not directly address the specific concern of increased police presence. If I missed it, which is possible, I apologize. What was the response? Have you taken any measures to increase police presence in the areas requested? Have any of the council members attended a practice or shown up for support? If nothing has been done, why not? Our family is not looking to be patronized. We as a family are not going to be silent. We want justice for my brother and we want the west side of Asbury Park to be just as safe as the east side. We'd welcome a, a meeting to discuss privately as well. If your response is, we'll put it under review. When can we expect to hear back and who can we contact directly if we haven't heard back in said time? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I can't answer all your questions right now, but we can set up a meeting where we can go through them. Uh, did we have more police president at APYF? Absolutely. The next day, you know, it was given to the police department. Uh, council people attended. I don't know. I have not. I apologize for that. And the other questions, as far as like what committees are out there, there's the Greater Asbury Parks CDI Community Development could, Initiative, which could I'll you talk the into the microphones, please? <laughs> which I'll give you the dates when they meet and everything. But I think what the best thing to do is because you have so many questions, and I don't think they can all be answered tonight. The police chief is here if he wants to address like to some of them. Is invite you tomorrow morning to come in and meet with us if that's possible. And we'll answer all your questions. Uh, if you want to do it tonight, we'll do it tonight. Um, I don't necessarily have to. We don't necessarily. A little, you know, if, if we hadn't come here today, then, then what? But we certainly uh, would like to meet. You, you, let, let us know a date and time, and, you know, I just don't want. I'll have Detective Poulos work with them, and whatever's good for you. But I think, I think they would appreciate council people being there also. And I, I, I think. I just believe that you are the, you, you make the decisions for, for the city, and you. You know, we, we need you. We, we want to work together to address gun violence. We don't want to turn a blind eye and let another mother go through what my mother is experiencing now. We need to, the community needs to know that we're not standing for this, that we're no longer going to be afraid, that we are going to join forces, and we're going to combat this. It, this is not the same city I grew up in. I, 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 I totally agree with you, and that's why I would like to be at that meeting also because I'd like to volunteer also. It's much yeah. as like we set policy, we don't run day to day operations. So, you know, I can't tell the police chief, you know, do X, Y, and Z. We, we don't have that power, but we do set policy. So, uh, thank you. I, I appreciate you coming here today. I, I, my deepest condolences to you and your family. Uh, you know, our social services department. Probably should have reached out. Uh, hindsight's perfect. I'm sure we dropped the ball several times. I, for that, I apologize. But like you say, we have to go forward. And hopefully this is a step to go forward. And you have my sincere promise. I will be at any meeting. I'll be very supportive. And 
If I drop the ball in the past, I will not drop the ball in the future. Thank you. Thank you. So, please, when you set up the meeting, I think the best thing to do is be set it up through the city manager or with the police chief. But I want to make sure. Yeah, so Chief Kelso and I will coordinate. Just talk to the detectives you've been working with, and we'll set it up, and I'll advise the council, and we'll get it together and find you. Thank you. Right, because two of us, and only two of us can be there because of the sunshine laws, but two council people will be there to make sure we're aware of some things because everybody thinks mayor and council know everything. Sometimes we're the last ones to find things out. So I want to be at that meeting again. I apologize. I didn't reach out to you. Uh, I apologize to the entire family. And uh, again, my deepest condolences. Thank you. Do me a favor. Yes. Okay. Hi, Rita Miranda, 504 8th Avenue, Asbury Park. I want to go back to July 9th when you had the rally. I think my questions really go to Fred. Uh, July 9th was the rally. July 13th, it got approved. But when you approved it, Amy abstained, which was the right thing to do, and the other two women voted for it. Now, I think that was wrong because the next day or two days later on Facebook, they were all bragging about that they were in the women's convention. And if that's the case, then they shouldn't have voted. They should have abstained too. Now, that, I know that's a legal question. They broke the Sunshine Law is what they did, uh, the Open Public Meetings Act. And I want to know, this is going on too many times. This is the first time, though, that it was so bad. I mean, other things that you've done, you've voted later. But that shouldn't be. You got to vote when you're supposed to vote. I read all the regulations. You got to have everything in 10 days before. I got all the emails, all the correspondence that went on for a rally that doesn't really represent all the people, just a certain few. And that's not fair. When you do events in Asbury Park, they should be for we the people. That means everybody not just a certain few or a group. You shouldn't have these group things. They, they sort of divide the city up. And I wanna know if Fred knows what to do about this. They broke the Sunshine Law. So, Rita, and, and, and Amy put- And this gotta stop. You, okay. You're not a privileged character up there. None of you are privileged, you're the same as us. So when you vote, you have to vote the right way. And the two council people up there should have voted no or abstained like Amy did. So how does the vote go now? Does that vote have to be taken again? Because they were all over Facebook saying how proud they are to be in the women's convention that I'm a woman, I think, and I don't know anything about it. So, I mean, like, what is it, a private club? So I think we need a legal opinion. Right, Fred? <laughs> Are you ordering right. comments here? You have 20 seconds left. Yeah, well, I mean, I, this has really got to be corrected. We'll answer you once you finish your time. Do you have anything else? All right, that's all my comment for okay, tonight. Thank you. So Amy submitted the application for a rally, and that's why Amy didn't vote on it. Yvonne and I were volunteers, did not submit. We were not named in the application. We volunteered at the event, and that's why we were there. You did vote yes, right? Yes, but I was not, and Yvonne, neither Yvonne nor I were, were part of the application process. Okay. What about Councilwoman Clayton? Yes. Okay, so can I get a legal opinion from Fred that we broke the Sunshine Law? Well, 
Respectfully, um, Rita, the, the Sunshine Law prohibits council members from gathering, or at least a, a quorum of council members, which would be three or more, from gathering outside of a public meeting to discuss the public business of the city. This was not an event that dealt with the public business of the city. It dealt with other issues. Um, and council members are free to express their own individual um, feelings about, about different issues that are out there in, in the public domain. But these issues didn't have to do with the, the public business of the city of Asbury Park. So I do not feel there was any violation of the Sunshine Law. And? So I do not feel there was any violation. That's your opinion? Yes. You know, this happened once before when we went okay, before Rita, FOG. Right. Rita, your time's up. You asked the question, it's been answered. No, that's it. Okay. Just to be clear, Fred, my uh, role on the city council does not prevent me from participating in Roe v. Wade protest, Black Lives Matter protest. I'm allowed to participate. Express your, absolutely, your personal feelings and, and to, to your First Amendment right to participate in rallies as you see fit. Correct. Good evening. Um, my name is Kwasim Johnson. My wife um, spoke earlier and my mother sitting in the front. Um, not a resident of Asbury Park, but I do work here in the city. I'm the director of housing for the um, housing authority. And I wasn't gonna say anything here tonight, but my heart is heavy. And I have to say, just the actions that took place in this room tonight speaks volumes to me. And what I mean by that is we sat here and we listened to a proclamation for about 10 minutes and Councilwoman, I, I can't read your name, I don't have my glasses on, I believe it's Chapman. Um, and I know I'm not supposed to direct my questions at you directly, so I'm gonna digress. But you politely excuse members of this community that they didn't have to hear members of this community. And then I watched my wife get up here and speak, and three minutes after she finished speaking, when they felt that we weren't gonna say anything else, the police department exited the room. It speaks volumes, yes. volumes to what we're dealing with in this city. And it hurts my heart that we can sit up here and act like we don't see it. There's a direct division that happens in Asbury Park every day. I manage seven public um, housing communities in this city and I watch it every day. I watch the police department tell me, yeah, we know so-and-so has the Asbury Park Village under control and that's like his sanctuary. So why don't I see police department walking in Asbury Park Village? I had the police department tell me that 85% of the crime in Asbury Park comes from the Asbury Park Housing Authority or the surrounding area right there. So why isn't 85% of the police force in that area? It just, logical look, logically, and I'm not trained law enforcement whatsoever, and I'm not here to attack law enforcement, because I work with them every day, and they are a, a vital part of this community. But I believe somebody needs to put their foot down and recognize that there's a problem and address it. I was looking at all types of research. You know how high Asbury Park is rate, rated and violent crimes? Like out of the entire nation, it's only like 200 cities that's higher per uh, capita. It's absolutely disturbing and that we can just go on day after day because it's not hitting us at home. So my question to you is, at what point are we gonna put our foot down and say enough is enough and we're gonna do what we need to do to change our community for our babies? My 10 year old daughter asked me after her uncle was shot and killed, dad, if they shot Uncle Booty, does that mean when I go outside I can get shot? That was what from my 10 year old daughter. And as a dad, I can't protect her from that. All I can do is have faith in the God that I serve and say, no, baby, God will, will protect us. But we don't, you don't have to deal with that. It's, it's our community. It's the African-American community that's dealing with it. There are no shootings on the east side of Asbury Park. But when I ride down there right now, I guarantee you, if we took a ride right now, you will see more cops down by the beach than you do here. Guarantee you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We, need, we want answers. We're asking questions. We yeah, want if, answers. If, 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 if you want to get up, please. Yeah, go. 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 
but we don't want to be viewed as the angry black people in the community. So what do you do the right way? But we're glad they listened to everything you have to say. You just have to get up to the microphone and give us your name. <clears throat> My name is Penny Dees. I'm a longtime resident of Asbury Park. My daughter was murdered back in 92, so I know what the parent is going through. This is a hard pill to swallow. And it, it like, I know that it's, it's just sometimes it's, you know, it's unbearable because we don't want to see our children killed. We want the streets to be safe. And I know that we even had a program that we had that was trying to start up as uh, Moms Against, you know, Moms Violence, Moms Against Violence. We tried to start that up. And you know, it's like certain things that you try to start up, but it never gets completed because people don't want to come out. When someone dies, they don't want to say who did it. It took 26 years before I got my justice. I don't want this parent here to wait 26 years to get justice for her son. Because going through this every day, every, it's emotional, it's a strain on you, it takes a toll. I mean, your, your life is never the same. Until you lose a child, nobody knows what we're going through and how we feel. So as you know, I know, I know that y'all work with us because you have worked with me, so I know that y'all will work with them. So, you know, I just wanted to let y'all know that they, that they will work with you because they did work with me. Even though it took 26 years, I still got what I needed done. So I'm praying that y'all don't have to wait 26 years like I did. Hopefully someone will speak up soon and say what they know. And that's the problem because they don't want to speak up. They, they want to keep silent, but we need to let, let them know. If we have to march out here like I did for 26 years, we will march the streets. Let them know that we are not giving up, that we want justice for her son. So and I'm willing to march with you because I have marched for my 26 years. Anything that you need me to do, I'm willing to do. Thank you, Ms. Dees. Matt Daniels, 1026 Monroe Avenue. Um, I had no idea what happened. I am very sorry to the family of the, of the victim. Um, I think everyone on the side um, of the room knows what it's like to be affected by gun violence. Um, and I understand, as I'm sure you all do up there, uh, the, the plea for answers of not only, only justice for the victim, but what are we gonna do in the future? Um, I know that the city, um, just off the top of my head, uh, has done gun buyback programs. Um, it, that, that, that's pretty much all I know. Um, and I also, you know, I, I hear, I hear my, my, uh, my friend over here when he, when he uh, states that, there are a number of police officers over, officers over there walking the beat, and maybe not so many over here. And I, I don't think that's, there's any fault to that, but people are asking to be heard um, and answered. Um, it, it doesn't help grieving when, when we don't have answers. Um, I, being one of those people that don't have answers, I, like, I get it, guys. Um, and so I think some sort of, as you guys have discussed, um, some sort of meeting, uh, but not only just one promise meeting, you know, a continuance in these meetings, because, look, like, as I said, um, maybe... Uh, I want to say seven years ago, I, I felt this as well. My friend uh, was gunned down. And lucky for me, finally, uh, we got some sort of justice. And the, um, the, the perpetrator got, got uh, a few years, got like 10 years. Um, but what happens after that? Um, I'm asking these questions, not just for me, but for, for them. What, what do we do after that? Do we have any ideas? 
The, uh, I, the idea that I have is a, a gun bu- uh, buyback program. Uh, I don't know if that solves everything. I don't think that solves everything. I don't think everything can be solved immediately, but there is obvious frustration here. And I don't know if, I don't think there's a fault, but there doesn't need to be a focus on the fault. There needs to be a focus on some sort of solution. Um, and I, <coughs> if, if we have any ideas, please, I implore you, let, let's get the ball rolling. Let's, get, let's start. Thanks for hearing me, guys. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. I think we all agree with you that more has to be done at the city level, the county level, the state level, and I'm going to say especially the state level. When police are told, okay, you can lock somebody up, but they're let out the next day. When the state lets so many hard criminals out, when doesn't even tell the cities that they're letting them in back in Dasbury Park or Newark or Camden or whatever. So I'm not blaming them as much as I'm blaming everybody, including the city. Again, I think if there's more police to, deployed to the east side and the west side, I'd be very disappointed. I'd be walking the streets with you in protest. That's not what we're being told. I believe the council believes in community policing. Get out of the squad cars, walk. We started the bike patrols this year. Hopefully they're on the west side and the east side and the north side and the south side. This is not a tale of two cities, the east side, the west side. This is not a tale of four quadrants. This should be a tale of one city. And if that's not being done, then it's our job to start correcting it. And that's why these meetings are important. Like Ms. D said, we have started those meetings with Ms. Fitzpatrick and others that have lost children. And through the CDI meetings, and Yvonne had a, with Reverend Aikens, you know, our, 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 our reverends in the town are fantastic, be it uh, Pastor Van Sant, Reverend Aikens, where the chaplaincy program has reached out to help us and help everybody in Aspen Park. Like somebody mentioned, Ms. Steve's mentioned, part of the problem is, unfortunately, someone will be shot and there's 30 witnesses, but nobody will say anything. Well, okay, I think, I okay, think we all want to okay. hand in hand. Right. We, 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 absolutely. We all have to do this together, and that's why I want to be at that meeting. And again, I'm embarrassed I didn't reach out to you. And that's something like I've got to live with, and again, all I can do is apologize. Okay. Um, not seeing anyone else. Would anybody else like to be hurt? We're not gonna rush anybody tonight. You came, please don't go home and say, I wish I'd said this. Hi, my name's Nichelle Hostler and my brother was murdered in 86. Um, I've known the family since I was a little girl, so I can sympathize with everything that's going on with them. I think part of the problem is when somebody witnesses something, um, the name is being carried. So that's why no one comes forward. Um, I would be afraid to say something if I saw something, if I knew my name was gonna be mentioned and my family members would be hurt or harmed because of it. So that rule definitely needs to change because their family needs justice. They're not gonna be able to sleep at night knowing that this person is walking the streets and they don't know who the person is. You could be standing next to them out somewhere and not knowing that that's the person that took your family member's life. Now, it's been since 86 that my brother passed away, and I swear it's it's like it happened yesterday. I'm constantly reminded of the fact that he didn't watch me graduate from high school or, you know, got a chance to meet my kids, and my mother grieved every night about losing her son at the age of 22. So that, that rule definitely needs to be changed. I don't know if it's in the works, but that's why people don't come forward, because they're afraid. It's, it's not something about, oh, it's, it's a street cold. People are afraid of their own lives, and that's why they don't say anything. But that definitely needs to change, because this family should not be dealing with this. I got lucky in my case that they were able to find the person that did it, and he got his time. But still, that doesn't bring my brother back, and, and it doesn't stop my mother from grieving. So they, they need to do something about that. They really do. Thank you. Anybody else like to be hurt? One 
last chance. And again, I don't want you to go home and say, okay, let's say, okay, then thank you. Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Thank you. And I thank you for coming out tonight and we will have this meeting and we will make progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now on to the minutes. I have the executive session minutes of July 27th, 2022, and the regular meeting minutes of July 27th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Move it. The second on the minute. Thank you. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Deputy yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're now on to consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on consent agenda are presented collectively to the city council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are considered to be routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from consent agenda and considered separately. On consent tonight, we have resolutions 2022-349 through 2022-3... <laughs> 2022-352, whereas 2022-352 uh, resolution appointing member to the Zoning Board of Adjustment would be John Scully being appointed to a regular member with a term date to expire uh, December 31st, 2022. I'm going to make a motion to pull out uh, resolution 2022-351. Sure. Consent? That doesn't need a formal motion. You can just make oh. that request. Okay. Thank you. Okay, may I have a motion to adopt consent without 2022-351? Second. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. Uh, we're going to move on to 2022-351, a resolution authorizing the mayor and city council to execute a discharge of mortgage for Stefan Ashen for properties located at 509 3rd Avenue and 614 2nd Avenue, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. I'll second. Councilmember Chapman? No. Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore. It's gonna fail one way or another, but I'll vote yes. Just because it's state law. Okay, resolution. Thank you. We are now on to resolution 2022-353, resolution approving payment of bills. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2022-343, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park acting as a waterfront redevelopment entity granting conceptual approval to Madison Asbury Retail LLC for modifications to the facade of the 3rd Avenue Pavilion, 1000 Ocean Avenue parcel in block 42, 4502, lot 1.10 and referring the matter to the planning board for appropriate approvals. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2022-354, resolution awarding a contract to Taylor Fence Company for new fencing at Springwood at, at Springwood Park. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2022-355, a resolution awarding of a contract to Millennium Communications Group for yearly camera support and service. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. 
Yes. Resolution 2022-356, a resolution authorizing membership with the Keystone Purchasing Network Cooperative Purchasing Program. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2022-357, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park, acting as the redevelopment entity, authorizing a temporary cellular installation on the northwest portion of block 4306, lot two, and the northeast corner of block 4105, lot four, within the waterfront redevelopment area. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2022-358, resolution approving change order number five for Bond Street Improvements Project. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2022-359, a resolution authorizing the execution of a use and license agreement with See Here Now Festivals, LLC, concerning a live cultural music and art festival to be held in a designated portion of the Asbury Park waterfront area on certain specified dates in 2022, 2023, and 2024, and authorizing the issuance of a special events permit in connection therewith. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Uh, we have an addition, additional resolution to tonight's agenda. It would be resolution 2022-360, a resolution clarifying the city council's legislative intent regarding the location of medical cannabis alternative treatment centers within the city of Asbury Park. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We, if no one has anything else, we're on to adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.